Good morning, Jim from CQT here today. We're going to talk about the anatomy of a scope. What is the difference between a 3x9 scope that may cost $150 to one that may be $1,200? We've got this Vortex here today. It's a Diamondback. Let's start with this end of the scope, the close, closest to your eye. This end here is the eyepiece it usually will have an adjustable diopter. What, the, what does that mean? That means that I can actually make the scope reticle itself clear to my eye. It could be different from one shooter to the next, but once you do this for you, you never have to touch it again until your eyesight actually changes. Moving forward here, we have a windage and elevation uh, knobs. In other words, it will move the reticle in relation to the bullet impact. So we can adjust it so if I'm, I'm hitting too far right or too far uh, below, I can actually turn and adjust and bring it to center. And the center part is referred to as the tube. Different size tubes generally from one inch to um, 30 millimeters, sometimes even more on, on supper, uh, some upper end scopes. Further up here is the objective and they are all ranged in different sizes. This is a huge portion of what some of the differences between different scopes of the same magnification. So what happens in between here? All the magnification, not, not necessarily all of it, about 95% of all the magnification of your scope is gonna happen right here in the center. A scope itself has a stacked set of lenses in each end and that is how it's going to develop the other portion of the magnification. But most of it will happen right here in the middle. What's also in the, in the tube of the scope is what they're filled with. They're filled generally with either a nitrogen or an argon gas. And what that does is for us hunting folks, that helps keep the lens clear when it gets really cold or a change in temperature. Also helps with clarity within the picture. The gas in there will help, help everything keep everything tack sharp, crisp contrast, and that's the other part of the objective too, is the more light I can get in there, the more action I can make that happen. So you usually will see a group of three numbers when you look at a rifle scope or a box. It'll say like a three by nine by 50 or by 30 or by 40. So those numbers are, the first number is the lowest magnification of that scope. In other words, in a three by nine, it would be a three power. In the case of this Diamondback, it is a four power. So it's, it's, that's as low its setting. The second number is its highest setting, its highest amount of magnification. In the case of a three by nine, it is the nine. In this case here, in this Diamondback, it is a 12. So it is a four by 12. And the last number, third number that you normally see on the box is the size of the objective. It's the size of the opening that's going to let in the amount of ambient light. The bigger the opening, the more light in, the more I can actually use this during all different types of lighting conditions, especially in the lower light conditions. So those are the three numbers. So what makes the difference between a $300 scope and or a $200 scope and something that may cost a thousand dollars nine hundred dollars let's first talk about the glass the inside the part that you cannot see the type of glass that they use on the inside and the amount of glass that they use on the inside has a factor the glass itself is it ranges in all different types with low dispersion type glass and what's in between them some of them are going to be nitrogen filled, some of them are going to be argon filled. The diameter of the tube is going to be another factor. The larger the tube, the more ambient light, the larger the glass can be on the inside, so that can actually make it for more magnification. That has something to do with the price. The turrets themselves, some of them are going to be high profile like this precision type scope which they're adjustable. Most of them are going to be like in quarter, one quarter minute of angle. That's the same thing for the windage and elevation. Some of them will have a third knob on the other side and that's going to have the adjustment for your parallax adjustment. Other than that, 
and that is a lot of what happening on the inside, the magnification is also going to dictate some things too. To get that large clear magnification, let's say I wanted to really reach out and touch something and they have scopes that are in the range of a 15 by 60 by 55. So that's a huge amount of magnification. Something would I want to use here hunting in Michigan? Probably not. But something if I was going to go like Camp Perry and want to reach out to six, eight hundred yards? Oh yes, most definitely. Matching your magnification needs for your particular needs is the key thing here. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you learned a little bit about your scopes today, the anatomy of your scope. Please check us out on Instagram and also don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Once again, thank you very much.